In this tutorial, I will talk about my approach on how to learn and I will give you an insight into how I would interpret this music. In my opinion, it has two future characters. On one side there is the accompaniment, which is very distant, almost unattainable. And on the other side there is the melody, which is very present, full of life, or afterlife. If you need the sheet music, you can find it in the description. There are also my fingerings, and it's free. If you are ready, let's start with the intro. We have 8 notes repeating throughout the whole bar, and it gets more crowded by adding one more tone every bar. I usually talk about the pedal later on, but this is a special case. I think in this piece, we need the pedals throughout the whole learning process, as it has a huge impact on the way the left hand sounds. In this intro, the color that I search for is inspired by the original version, which is for oboe and orchestra. I want to play the intro and the accompaniment with a similar articulation as the strings. The problem with using the sustain pedal all the way is that the 8 notes become very long. Even if you play them shortly, it wouldn't help, because they'll keep sustaining. Although the 8 notes are played with vibrato, you can still hear the gap in between them. The way I want to implement this approach to the piano is pretty simple, but requires some practicing. I just slightly touch the right pedal instead of fully, and I change it with every 8 note. Also, I will make sure to play them a little shorter. Imagine pulling the keys towards yourself. To produce consistent sound, it's very important to keep doing this movement in the same way. Let's first hear it without the pedal. Now let's add the pedal, roughly halfway of the motion range. Here it is. So let's stick to the plan for the rest of the piece. If you struggled with changing the pedal this way, just give it some time and practice only the left hand with the pedal, changing it with each 8 note. I want to start relatively softly in the first bar. I like to imagine it as the heartbeat. In the second bar, I will increase the volume a little bit, which will create extra tension with this dissonant combination. And in the third bar, I will increase the dynamics a little more. It's kind of an imitation for the first melody. Let's go further with the melody. Here we have the same pattern, played four times in different harmonies. It always has a starting point, and then it resolves somewhere else. Let's talk about the first two bars. The first tone is our starting point, and the destination is on the first beat of the next bar. We need to play with a certain feeling of direction, from starting point to the destination. I think here the starting point has more tension, and the destination point has more of a relief feeling. Therefore, I start with a brighter sound, and I will finish it in a softer dynamic. Make sure to play with flexible wrists and try bouncing a little bit on each beat to produce a beautiful tone. This movement will also help you naturally connect the slurs.
I recommend being very precise with the slurs for the rest of the piece. Keep your arms and wrists very relaxed and search for elegant sound. About the direction. Imagine you want to go somewhere and you change your mind right before getting there. For the next three motifs, I play with the same plan, but every next one a bit softer than the previous. Let's take a look at the left hand. It is pretty much the same texture as in the intro. Therefore, I want to play it with a similar approach. Let's keep them quiet and somewhat short. I will press the pedal just a little bit and I will change it every heartbeat. Also, let's decrease the dynamics with every next bar. Remember about the pulling the keys towards yourself. Let's move on to the next phrase. This time the pattern is built out of three similar motifs. I will start very softly, then increase the dynamics with each motif. This way I will take it from far away and bring it closer and closer. Let's check the left hand. Here it's a little different than the previous section. We have parallel chords consisting of three notes. Let's try to play the upper tones a little brighter. This will give crystal sound, which works so well with the character of the melody. Let's move on to the next section. Here we have two harmonically similar motifs and melodically a little different. In the previous section, we had a build up. Therefore, I would like to start with more sound. Ideally, play the first motif forte and the second one pianissimo. The same idea in two contrasting sound worlds. Make sure to finish both motifs gently, no matter in what dynamic you are playing. Now let's check the left hand. Pretty much the same plan as the right hand. I want to play the first two bars stronger and the next two bars very gently. Let's move on to the next section. On the right hand, we have such a delicate melody. I would like to start it with a somewhat cold and distant sound. Also here, I want to increase the dynamics towards the end of the section.
As you heard, I decreased the dynamics dramatically in the last part, after playing the thriller, because I want to start very gently the coming section. Also, I like to slow down while decreasing the dynamics here, to take the attention of the audience to the coming section. Ok, let's go for the left hand. Make sure you start as soft as you can, so you don't dominate the right hand's melody in any way. Try starting as soft as you can to make it sound heavenly, and increase the dynamics to bring the tension. Let's move on to the next section. This is one of my favorite moments in this piece. In the first three bars, we have a very sweet melody, full of affection. At this point, the pain comes back, and therefore I want to increase the dynamics and bring back the tension. Nothing much for the left hand. All I want to do is to play with the same dynamics plan as the right hand. In the last bar, make sure to play the 16 notes connected. eight notes separately, as before. Practice them separately first, and then try playing them together. Alright, let's put them together. The last phrase. First, I will start softly and increase the dynamics gradually. At this point, instead of keeping the dynamics growing, I want to take the audience to heaven one last time. Well, at least I want to try. So, I will play suddenly very softly here. To be able to give this surprising feeling, it's important to do it very suddenly. So, at the beginning, don't think about the soft playing, but just focus on increasing the dynamics. And in the third bar, try suddenly playing very soft. If you can surprise yourself, you can surprise the audience. Also, make sure to slow down in the last bar, because this is the end of the melody. By doing that, we will also prepare the start of the coda, where we need to play with a different character.
Let's play the left hand. Now the coda. It is a familiar texture from the intro. However, this section is way more dramatic. It is in a way a statement, summarizing everything we have played before. I want to play with a serious and decisive character. I will start with a brighter sound and increase the dynamics with every harmonic change. Last three bars we have four different layers. I want to play the upper voices with more open sound, as they are very melodic. And the bottom layers I will play much softer, as they are the accompaniment. Now let's put them together. I would gradually slow down towards the end of the piece. Before I play the whole piece through, I want to talk about the musical message. Tempo will play a huge role when you choose what kind of character you want to give to this music. The title Adagio suggests to play slowly, and I prefer to stick to that. Maybe if you play it quicker, it will feel easier, but I recommend searching in slower tempi, which will give certain calmness and wisdom to the character of the piece. Also, I want to enjoy every tone, especially in the melody, which is written relatively simply, and therefore a slower tempo makes sense. And remember, try to be very precise with the contrast between two hands, because this is the key point of telling your story beautifully and touchingly.
All right, guys, that was all. Hope you have enjoyed the video and it will give you something. I'll see you in another tutorial. Later.